to stare. What you are seeing now is the home of Review Studios in Hollywood. This is where we make the Fred Astaire premiere theater each week. For me, it's been a very exciting series. I get to narrate a little, tell stories, act, and, well, you might say, get involved in just about every show, one way or another. It's exciting for other reasons, too. Partly because we're fortunate enough to get stories and teleplays from some very talented authors, people like Don Stanford, David Karp, Wallace Brown, Peter Tewksbury, Ray Bradbury, Ernest Kenoy, Lionel Trilling, Howard Rodman. And to bring these stories to life, we're doubly fortunate in gathering some of the finest directors and producers in the industry. Now, let me show you some of the results of this work. These are some of the highlights from episodes of this past season. Hey, something serious? Well, sort of. Actually, I've seen him a number of times this past month. Well, now tell me, what's the matter? What's wrong? I'm going to have a baby, Wally. In the fortress, Lloyd Bridges endures endless hours of brainwashing as a captured army officer in a Korean prison camp. This is a true story of a man subjected to what seemed a lifetime of torment. I have a nice surprise for you. Letters have come for you from your home in Tokyo through the Red Cross. Letters from your wife. <laughs> They are many weeks' worth of news from her. You're to be congratulated, Lieutenant. She has had a baby. A boy. <laughs> I've had to read the letters, naturally. They're very happy letters. Full of joy and love and hope for your safe return to her and the baby. answered the questions. Hello, kitty. When George Bick was 12 years old, he worked after school and Saturdays in his father's grocery store in Hoboken. He was then five feet, one inch tall. And George always took it for granted that someday he would grow up. He never did. At 40, he was still the same height as when he was 12. And he never got out of the grocery business either. Like everybody else, George had had a mother and a father. But George never cared much for his father. George didn't care very much for his mother either. She was a big, ugly woman. She drank a lot of beer. She complained a great deal. She yelled at George and his father all the time. Finally, George's father died. He looked relieved in the coffin. George's mother sold the store, took the money and disappeared. Then George was alone. He was 16 at the time. He was lonely, and he wanted some attention. He tried to grow a mustache, but nobody noticed. He invented a middle name. His signature became George Winthrop Bick. But it didn't make any difference either. He took up public speaking at night school. But outside of class, George's voice created as much impression as a marshmallow falling on a feather pillow. Now, a man who is not noticed is dead. A man who has not been heard has not been born. It is the habit of life to resist death. Now, in the 40th year of his life, in whatever way he can, George Bick is about to make himself heard.
show behind this panel will sit our mystery celebrity. Will it be George Jakiris, James Darren, Troy Donahue, Vince Edwards, or Dwayne Hickman? You'll find out when we play your first impression. Now here is your host, Bill Layden. Behind this panel will sit our mystery celebrity. Will it be George Jakiris, James Darren, Troy Donahue, Vince Edwards, or Dwayne Hickman? You'll find out when we play your first impression. Now here is your host, Bill Layden. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Wendell Lyles, and welcome to all of you. We're going to play the game with our mystery celebrity just a little bit later. Now let's meet our panel. We'll play your first impression right from the top, and we have two new ones, two guest ones today. First, our regular smoothie. <laughs> He's taken up the pipe instead of golf, and I suggested Mr. Dennis James. <laughs> the rare combination of fine beauty and equal talent, Inger Stevens, a very wonderful actress. Another great comedian and a well-known television and motion picture star who's so proud of the coat pre uh, presented to by the Norwegian Navy, which means... <laughs> it means don't, don't approach typhoid aboy, aboard there. Mr. Steve Dunn there, whatever I said. <laughs> Steve, I know this is your first appearance on our show, but this is ridiculous. You know? Bill, Bill, <laughs> yes, he's sir. a typical Hollywood boy, right? No, he's a wonderful guy, but the coach, you know, he wore it on a bet and he just lost. All right, panel, <laughs> let's begin your work and let us meet our first guest. Would the lady come in, please? How do you do? Any day that starts this way needs a fresh start fast with Ovaltine. Ovaltine, the remarkable drink that helps you perk up naturally. Ovaltine, made to the taste of today's adults and their more discriminating children. But more important, nothing imitation about Ovaltine. Its vitamin-rich refreshment satisfies you naturally, restores you naturally, without using caffeine or other drugs. Those problems... Nothing quite like Ovaltine for starting days on the right note. Natural or Swiss-style chocolate-flavored Ovaltine in smart new jars. Have you tried Ovaltine lately? When things start breaking this way, it's time for an Ovaltine break. Ovaltine, the remarkable drink that lets you unwind naturally. Ovaltine, made to the taste of today's adults and their more discriminating children. But more important, nothing imitation about Ovaltine. Its vitamin-rich refreshment satisfies you naturally, restores you naturally, without using caffeine or other drugs. Those problems... Nothing quite like an Ovaltine break for snapping things back in place. Natural or Swiss-style chocolate-flavored Ovaltine in smart new jars. Have you tried Ovaltine lately? <laughs> <laughs> 